Donald Trump has until tomorrow to pay a $454 million bond in his New York civil fraud case. If he misses the deadline, State Attorney General Letitia James can freeze his bank accounts and begin proceedings to seize his assets. Former federal prosecutor Brett Tolman joins us now. Uh, Brett, great to see you this morning. Thanks for being with us here to understand what could go down as early as tomorrow. You know, if there's going to be a property seizure, my understanding is legally that could actually take some time to litigate. So I wouldn't expect chains or yellow tape on any Trump buildings, but they could seize his bank accounts, right, starting on Monday. That's right, Will. Thanks for having me on. You know, this is it's an unprecedented time. You have uh, an individual who's been a businessman. There's no victims in the underlying case. The judgment that was assessed on this is devoid of being um, tied rationally to to the uh, case at hand. It's it's what we, we, we have long known about civil asset forfeiture in this country, that it is done oftentimes without the benefit of the facts truly supporting it. Um, it's an area of the law that really needs an overhaul, but this is going to start a process that could take quite some time. Donald Trump will will have the ability to to have a hearing, have hearings on it. Valuations become important. But we'll think about this. If there is anyone or any entity that has ownership of any of the other assets, they're going to have claims on this. So it, it's going to be, you know, more legal wrangling, more more assessments and judgments that come down fr from a court that doesn't like Donald Trump. Which it's just hard to escape. Brett, that this is the purpose of the suit. This is the purpose of the prosecutions. The purpose isn't justice or the potential outcome, but the purpose is the process, because the process in and of itself becomes punishment. I, th I think, Will, you are hitting on, you know, the thing that most Americans may be missing on this, and, and, and it is that they don't really care about the outcome. Anytime someone with power, a prosecutor, a DA, uh, anyone with power that can enforce the laws of this country, when they stop caring about the actual case at hand and they care more about making it difficult for an individual that they don't like, then we've lost the interest of fairness in the administration of justice. So what do you what is a reasonable expectation this week, Brett? We've all sort of felt this impending, um, you know, inflection point for Monday with the requirement that the 454 million be in some way satisfied tomorrow. But what is what what would we see this week? What do you think is a reasonable expectation? I would see. I would think that they immediately want to attach the judgment to his liquid assets, so cash that's on hand, uh, accounts that they can seize. That's still going to take some time as well. I would think that the president feels some desperation right now. Um, very difficult to have the government coming after you, but if you step back. Realize that you do have some due process as, as they, they attempt to assess and seize his assets. Buy as much time as you can. Try to get that appeal um, through the system. And you might be able to stave off at least attachment and seizure of some of the, the, the properties that really are, are, are the problem here. But you have a lot of people that are employed by these, these uh, you know, assets that he has, the Trump Tower, his businesses. And so I think that's his his best bet. But keep in mind, Will, taking a step back and, and and showing and highlighting the abuse that's going on seems to only help Donald Trump in this matter. So yeah. he, he may know and understand that that strategy right now may boost him in the polls as, as we continue to watch the government single him out and isolate him all for the purpose of keeping him off the ballot. All right, Brett Tolman, that'll be an interesting week. Thanks for setting it up for us this morning on Fox & Friends. Thanks, Will. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.